Okay, I think uh, uh, Mike is uh, working now. So thanks a lot for being here. Uh, I'm going to be try to be brief. Uh, I know that uh, uh, lunch is coming, so that's uh, very important right now. So basically, uh, at Earth Daily Agro, our main goal is to provide uh, space, space edge data and analytics for the organizations and people that uh, feel the fit the planet. So I'm going to talk a little bit about us, uh, real quick, two slides, uh, for you to give uh, some, some context. Uh, basically, we are a very old startup. We have been 35 years in business, but uh, we are still evolving, and you will see how we are now being a startup. And uh, the second thing is that we are global, but not global because we have offices around the world that we, we do have. We have uh, in Canada, in the US, in Brazil, in uh, uh, Australia, but because we actually provide data for agriculture uh, around the globe, everywhere. Everywhere you want, uh, we will be able to uh, uh, give you information and data uh, uh, for agricultural purposes. And uh, the type of expertise that we have is the intersection between agronomy, of course, earth observation and analytics. That's our sweet spot, is where we are actually uh, uh, comfortable. And we have three pillars in our offering, and we are going to talk a little bit about them uh, uh, later. But uh, we have the data pillar, where we use mainly uh, Earth observation, so sat satellite imagery, but we also use other types of data sets. So weather information is also important for us and some IoT devices, etc. Uh, we have platform and analytics. So in order to actually provide access to those analytics, etc., we actually have developed a very uh, comprehensive platform that connects to QGIS, which is the, 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 the key here. And uh, the analytics are basically the way we actually help these decision makers in the agro industry to uh, do more informed decisions. And then the services. Services are very standard. It's uh, IT services for integration of the platform. Everything in our platform is API ready. So basically it's integration services. Uh, we have some data science services. If you need to develop an algorithm uh, and uh, you don't have inside uh, uh, people that can do it, we, we can do it. And also we have crop analysts that uh, are people that is expert in interpreting the output of the algorithms. Uh, so they can help you on understanding what does this mean. So that's uh, uh, interesting. So now let's jump into the data side, which is part of uh, what is interesting here, uh, because that's the place where we are uh, actually announcing that we are launching our own constellation. So we are now uh, in the process of, if it goes, yes, uh, on the process of launching our own constellation. Uh, it will be launched uh, at the beginning of next year, and uh, it is uh, going to be part of our virtual constellation that we already are working with. So with our virtual constellation, basically our idea is to be able to provide reliable information for the, all the agricultural business around the world. That's the, the objective that, that, uh, that we have. And that includes access not only to in-season data, but also to historical data, 10 to 25 years of historical data. Very interesting for doing research, etc. And also uh, needs to be available worldwide. We know that agriculture is very global. So you need to have access to the data in a very global set. And um, the idea that we have very good public constellations is great, because we do have. But uh, due to cloud coverage, sometimes you need to actually push the limits and uh, uh, get other commercial task constellations, tasking constellations, to help on that part. So we are also doing that. And we are building our own constellation with daily revisit, which, because it's, it's important that you will see it later. Um, the core of our SAR offering is based on Sentinel-1. So, so that's, uh, that's uh, the core, let's say, SAR offering. Uh, the core low resolution is composed of uh, MODIS and Sentinel-3. And basically, we use both. Uh, the core of our medium resolution is on Sentinel-2 and uh, Landsat-8 and 9. And um, 
we are complementing that with uh, some commercial satellites for tasking uh, from Chinese satellites uh, to some Airbus satellites and other satellites. And here the key of this is that we are cross calibrating the signals from the different sensors. So basically one sensor, uh, uh, it has different radiometry, different resolution and different characteristics to another sensor. And it's difficult to actually have uh, uh, understand if what you are seeing is an artifact created by the fact that uh, you have more than one sensor or if it is something that is on the ground. So we actually cross calibrate. So when we say that we, you can download uh, a Sentinel, Landsat and other data sets, basically you are not downloading the off the shelf version. You are downloading a version that has been cross calibrated to Sentinel. So it is comparable with the information in Sentinel. So you can actually work with those different satellites without worrying about uh, that they are different satellites. And of course, we are building our own constellation. We are bringing it up and it's going to be cross calibrated against Sentinel. We are using Sentinel as the, as the gold standard for, for the constellation. And uh, I saw the, the presentation this morning about uh, accessing Copernicus. And uh, so we have been since Epoch Zero Copernicus customers because we have been, you know, 35 years ago, there was no Copernicus. We were using only Landsat and uh, RapidEye. And uh, 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 basically, we have been incorporating any new satellite that is available to the uh, analysis that we do. So basically, we have uh, been working with uh, uh, Copernicus data sets for a very, very, very long time. Um, going a little bit deeper on the Earth Daily constellation, uh, I am going to go uh, uh, on uh, a couple of things. So the first thing is that we are going to be launching it uh, next year. We were targeting the end of this year, but it looks like it's not going to be possible. So it's going to be January, February next year. So that's uh, 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 the, the latest uh, update that we have. Uh, and it's going to have 22 bands. It's a multispectral optical with 22 bands. We have curated those bands a lot for agriculture. It doesn't mean that they are not useful for other type of use cases. And you will see the type of bands that we have. So they are going to be very useful for other use cases. But we actually decided on those bands based on the experience that we have in agriculture and the type of use cases that they can help us with. Uh, the resolution, uh, the GSD is going to be five meters, uh, but uh, the final product resolution is going to be uh, 3.5 meters uh, per pixel, uh, which is uh, part of paint sharpening and uh, uh, some type of uh, uh, optimization for, for the different bands, but to make it easy mm, to use. And it will have worldwide coverage daily. That means that every day you will have a visit of the satellite and a new image every day if clouds provide, of course. So basically, uh, uh, the, the other very important part of the, of the offering is a very good cloud mask. And we are doing the same thing with the, the public satellites that we already have and with the, the commercial satellites that are, are, we are using. We are processing them with a, a specific uh, algorithm with cloud masks that allows us to filter those pixels that are in clouds or in uh, cloud, cloud shadows. Um, the bands are mm, on the visible near infrared, um, sphere and thermal uh, uh, areas, which allow us for a lot of different types of, uh, of uh, applications. Many of the, the uh, bands, you can see that they are marked as LS. That means that they are aligned with Landsat and Sentinel, which allows us to do this cross calibration because we want to make uh, 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 images that are easy to interact with the current uh, gold standards, Landsat and Sentinel. And there are other bands that are very specific uh, to this uh, constellation that allow us for some use cases that we were not able to do before. And uh, basically the type of use cases, of course, it, we are going to be able to be doing the same type of analysis that we have been doing, the core vegetation analysis that we have been doing uh, in the past years. Uh, but uh, we will allow for some other use cases that are interesting uh, regarding the, the, the vegetation. But also it allows us to uh, think about the soil, soil composition, soil content, soil degradation, etc., uh, atmosphere studies, uh, because of the sphere bands and uh, the, the aerosol uh, and the uh, water vapor, etc. 
and uh, of course a lot of uh, information about the water cycle with uh, uh, the temperature, the thermal bands, uh, uh, it's important for uh, uh, do doing all these calculations about the water cycle. All the 10 satellites are going to have all the sensors in, so every time that the, the data is captured, it's captured all the sensors at the same time. So that is very important. If we go further, uh, the idea is why daily it's important. Of course, there are some use cases that are basically daily, uh, like uh, irrigation. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense to actually understand irrigation weekly. Uh, uh, daily is, is, is very important. But in some other ca cases, it's not that important. But if you take in account the cloud coverage of certain regions of the world, uh, it is needed because you, with the current uh, weekly revisit that you have in average, you don't have images for a very long time. So if you revisit daily, you have a, a much higher probability of having a clear image of that uh, every week or something like that. So we have here the example of Mato Grosso in Brazil, where we are comparing the um, availability of images for a certain area for a Sentinel uh, with uh, the the some proxy for what will be the Earth daily constellation that is MODIS, which is daily. And uh, you can see here the, the huge difference in terms of the number of images that you have monthly. And uh, you see that uh, there are uh, months in which you are going to have less than one image a week, uh, which is the minimum for some of the uh, applications. And if you see a lot of the agricultural uh, areas in the world are very cloudy. Why? Because they need water. So in India, uh, you are, the agricultural season is actually synced with the monsoon uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, several other regions is exactly the same. So, so clouds for agriculture are a very important thing, but for uh, analytics and for earth observation for agriculture, it's very bad. <laughs> so basically we need to work with that uh, 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 problem. Now we are going to go to the Earth Daily platform just to understand how does QGIS fit here, because we are going to have very interesting new imagery, but we need to see how QGIS fits here. So we have the data, uh, Earth Daily Constellation data. For Earth Daily Constellation data, we had to actually define a new pipeline that allows us to take the uh, data that is coming from the satellites, raw data, and transform it in analysis-ready data. That's pretty normal for any company that is uh, actually taking information back from the satellites. So we have that, and we call it Earth, Earth Pipeline. Uh, everything needs to actually store somewhere in order to be used. So we uh, call it Earth Data Store, but it is a standard stack catalog with uh, uh, the, the, all the data is st uh, stored in uh, COG format uh, and in a cloud environment. So everything is going to be accessible in that way, stack catalog and uh, uh, a cloud environment. And of course, we have our own Earth Daily Analytics, agricultural algorithms, and the analytics that are going to be available also. Then, if we zoom in into this uh, uh, part, where does QGIS actually fit? So, it fits in two places. So, everything, all the data is actually stored in the Earth Data Store. Uh, why we are restoring Sentinel and Landsat data? Because we are not storing the original of the shelf one, we are actually storing the post-processed version that has both the cross calibration and the cloud mask applied. So that's, uh, that's uh, why we are restoring it uh, uh, there. And uh, basically you can have connectivity uh, with QGIS from the stack catalog. That's very normal and we have discussed that uh, there are the, 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 the stack plugin, it's uh, already available, we are using it, etc. And that there are developments on including some other capabilities in the core of QGIS that we are actually taking a look and uh, seeing how could we benefit from that too. On the other side, uh, we have the GOCs API, which is basically the way every customer and our own applications access our analytics and our data. So we have already a plugin uh, for QGIS that access that API. Uh, it uh, has not been developed internally in Earth Daily Agro. It was uh, developed by Cartosa and uh, basically uh, allows everybody to have access to uh, those analytics and uh, uh, that uh, uh, actually have 
uh, uh, we have in our API. And that's the other way in which it is connected. Um, if we sum in a little bit more, basically what you see is that not only the data from the satellite imagery is available, it is also available other types of data set like weather, etc. Um, the GeoSys plugin is uh, basically uh, uh, having information, uh, historical field data. It's having in-season analytics and maps for the, the, the agricultural and uh, the access to the processing service that we have. How does it look? So it looks like this. Basically, you can actually get first, uh, we want to abstract the agricultural environment from tiles and uh, sentinel tiles and Landsat tiles and all the different concepts that you have in Earth observation, you actually work from the field. So you actually have the geometries of your fields and actually select which fields you want the information from. And once you have selected, you can actually decide which sensors you want there, which type of index do you want, etc. So you just query and you have all the information that is available in the platform, and you can actually select which one you are going to download to QGIS. And what's the objective when you download it to QGIS? Well, basically, the idea is that you actually can visualize what uh, is there, but also you can start to play with it. You start to use all the standard um, uh, functionality and uh, create new workflows inside QGIS and uh, all the plugins and uh, if you want to use expressions for uh, uh, an analysis of the data, it is basically a GeoTIFF image. You can actually change uh, uh, those things. And basically that's it. This is uh, the type of things that we do. Oh, uh, the animation did not work, but basically some of this, we actually work for specific crops and for a specific uh, uh, type of analytics in the different phenology stages. And uh, that is our core work uh, that, we, th that we do. But we are now moving to have uh, satellite uh, uh, information, new satellite information available for everyone. If you want a little bit more information, we are have a, a, a table uh, uh, near the coffee area, so we can actually go and, and, and check. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much uh, for the talk. Now we have uh, room for some questions. Cool. <laughs> okay. Let's go one by one. You are first, <laughs> the quickest. Um, um, so if I understand you correctly, you uh, transformed your company from um, um, a company that does um, um, remote sensing analysis from uh, data from third parties to launching your own satellite constellation? Yeah, that's correct. Of course, that is a longer story. I can, I can go a little bit deeper, but basically we were born in, in, in France and we actually, the name of the company was Geosys and uh, uh, we were actually these 35 years doing that analysis of third party data uh, for specifically for agriculture, very focused on, on, the, on the agricultural side. And we were acquired by uh, uh, an American Canadian company that wanted to actually do all this uh, uh, launching of the satellites, etc. And uh, um, yeah, now we are on that. Our headquarters are now officially in Minnesota, in the, in the United States, but uh, uh, we still have most of the uh, R&D and the, uh, all the engineering in France, in Toulouse. And, and how big is the investment sum in, in terms of millions of euros uh, for, for all this? for the satellite constellation? Well, I cannot, I cannot go uh, uh, into details because it's not public, but uh, basically I can tell you that uh, this is 10 satellites and uh, that means uh, 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 launching the 10, the 10 satellites is uh, more than hundreds of millions. So, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big investment. These are larger satellites. These are not CubeSats, small sats, uh, because we, what we want is uh, basically scientific type of data. So uh, the satellites are like 300 kilos satellites uh, and uh, we are actually not designing or constructing the satellites. We are still an analytics and data company. So we actually outsource that. Uh, so the bus is from Airbus and the integration of all the 
sensors, etc., is is uh, is done by by uh, loft orbital and uh, ABB sensors and some Japanese sensors, etc. So the 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 the, the whole thing has been outsourced, and we are not even to operate the constellation. So, so we are outsourcing all that. We are still a data company and analytics. So that's the, 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 the idea. But it's an impressive ecosystem, I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We have one question here. Actually, two short questions because I didn't understand. The 3.5 meters, uh, is this the spec of the instrument or the effective resolution after processing? That's the first. Yeah. So basically, the, the, each band, each, each set of bands have different resolutions. So we can talk about a little bit. Uh, we, we, we do have the spec. Uh, okay. So, so in it's the, effective, in it's in not the, okay. But basically, the 3.5 is, is post processed uh, information. The basic uh, uh, is G the GSD. Basic GSD is five meters. So, so, so 3.5 is actually after some pen, pen sharpening, and uh, uh, it's the product uh, 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 resolution after processing. Yeah. And the second thing, we can talk about it afterwards. Okay. But, uh, Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I'm good because he asked, asked and he asked. Ah, good. <laughs> 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 Uh, another question related to the uh, GSD to ground sampling distance. Uh, you meant there are, uh, there was one slide showing that there will be also thermal uh, bands, and they which special resolutions will they have? 120 meters. 120. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Thank you for well. Ah, we do. <laughs> Everybody's looking for the for the lunch. I know, I know. You can hear it that over there. <laughs> okay, sorry, everybody. Uh, so, okay. uh, it means uh, you are not going to operate the satellites, but you are the boss. So you are going to tell them what to look at, what to shoot. Uh, are you going to let others maybe use the satellites? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It all the data is 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 available. We are developing analytics on top of it. Uh, we are acquiring some companies on specific topics. Mining, we already have one. We, we acquired the Card Labs, so so it's part of the group. So we are talking uh, uh, regarding mining there. But the data set is available to everyone. And uh, the idea is that for research and uh, education, we are going to have uh, some specific licensing that uh, that uh, we s it's still not totally worked out, but uh, will allow the, the, the academic community to have uh, 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 access to the data set. Okay, but having your own satellites means that uh, you no longer rely on uh, European Space Agency. You can simply do what you want. It is it is super important to have Sentinel uh, and 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 all the Copernicus. So first first of all, we are still working with that. Our gold standard is the Sentinel. Uh, uh, we are 300 kilos. They are bus-sized satellites, which have much more access to photons. So they are much better quality. That is 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 the is, is the truth, right? So so basically, we still use them for cross calibration, and those are going to be the gold standards anyway. And we are working with uh, the European Space Agency to be a third-party uh, 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 um, mission and, uh, and other types of things that are super important for, for, for us. So, so I think we are going to collaborate more than anything else with, uh, with, uh, with uh, 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 ESA. Uh, and uh, it is fundamental. We are still using Sentinel-3 as an example for the low resolution. We decided not to use Beerus. Uh, uh, we actually decided to move to uh, Sentinel-3 because of the lifespan of the mission and uh, the stability, etc. So, so, yeah, yeah. for us, uh, uh, Copernicus is, is super important. Thanks. Thank you very much for the questions and many for the talk. Now it's time for lunch. Yeah, thanks a lot to everyone.